Right. So um, yes, as Sam has mentioned, uh, my name is Stephanie Clausen, and I'm here to talk about WTF, the wide time series format. Um, does it, I, I'm, I'm curious if you recognize the parrot, then um, hopefully you've caught my gag. Um, and uh, if you don't recognize the parrot, then I, I highly recommend you um, YouTube WTF parrot after we're all done. It's super funny. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to talk a little about, uh, about my background. So I'm a software developer. I'm working on the Enterprise Plugin Squad. I've been at Grafana for a couple of years. Um, I'm a little bit of a nutcase sometimes, and uh, I love being outdoors. So I just a uh, quick plug for where I live. I live in New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, we're really close to the Bay of Fundy here, and uh, which is one of the seven wonders of, uh, well, I was a finalist for the Seven Wonders of Nature contest. And that is because the Bay of Fundy twice a day um, has an incoming tide of around 53 and a half feet or 16.3 meters. Um, and uh, this is due to this whole sloshing effect where um, the moon comes in at the shape of the bay. And um, as the water kind of sloshes uh, inward, it, um, you get this um, massive tide. So kind of like having two tsunamis a day, uh, tsunamis wouldn't really bug us very much here in, in the Maritimes of Canada. Um, a really cool um, phenomenon that happens is tidal bore, which is essentially when the tide comes in, uh, there's a wave of water that travels up the river that reverses the direction. And the world's saw longest surf so far uh, was 29 kilometers up the Petit Kodiak River, which heads towards Moncton. So if you do ever come up here, um, please know the tide times. Um, that's, uh, that, that's the most important rule. Check your local conditions and hazards. Um, uh, the, the, the tide can be beautiful and it can also be extremely dangerous. There's a, there is a, um, a picture that I took right here. And if you look um, sort of on, on the right hand side of the little, you know, the, the rock is jutting out there. Um, my son and I, we came past that on dry land about 10 minutes before we took a picture. And uh, within 10 minutes, the tide came in and we couldn't get out anymore and had to call search and rescue because uh, we were surrounded by cliffs. So it's uh, really important to understand the risks um, before we're venturing into the bay. All right, so um, so I talked a bit about me. I'm going to talk about a little about a little bit about time series data. Why we're trying to make your life easier by making it a little bit harder for a little while. Um, I'll talk about wide time series data, multi-frame time series data. And I'm probably not going to talk about long time series data because um, that's a lot of that's a lot of time series data. But if you're interested, um, you know, when when we're hanging out at the end, uh, pepper me with questions, and I'd love to answer them. Okay, so here's the brief history. So time series data, in its simplest form, um, is essentially a table of data where one of the columns provides a timestamp. Um, in Grafana, we have two types of plugins: panel plugins visualize the data, data source plugins retrieve the data. So uh, essentially, um, why um, we need this sort of a contract so that data sources can send data and they abide by the contract and panels receive the data, expecting the contract has been honored. There's, um, there has been in the past two formats, time series data and table data. And, and that's been a bit cumbersome because each data source has to implement both of those contracts. Um, so enter, uh, enter Apache Arrow which already has a, um, has a format and that's called the data frame. And that's how we're sending back data now. So essentially we're trying to make your life easier, but we're making it harder. Um, if anybody's watched Mystery Man, um, uh, the, this is the Sphinx and he is, uh, uh, his superpower is, is cliches. And so as soon as I wrote making life easier by making it harder, I thought of the cliche I was making. And so uh, put the picture of the Sphinx up. So um, essentially a data frame contains fields, fields contain, contain labels, which is metadata, and the values, which is the data. So uh, I'm gonna be using a lot of these so you can see a data frame over here. Inside we have months, um, under, um, that's, a, that's your field, and then underneath you have your time and your value. And this is relevant, I'm gonna do a demo a little bit later on to, to show you exactly how you can sort of diagnose when you're having a time series problem and how you can fix it. So this is what multi-frame time series data is. Essentially, you've got a data frame and you have one series, 
you send back another frame with one series, and you have a third. So instead of having one data frame with three series in it, you have three data frames with one series. So that's what multi-frame time series data is. Wide time series data, um, essentially, uh, I, I, think, I think the clincher is, is it tries to, uh, when you look, if you look at your raw data, you've got a timestamp. And this one here is one second behind the other two. So what wide time series data tries to do is it tries to take and make a data frame for all of the common timestamps. It's going to group by your time. So essentially, you're going to get a response here with all of the common timestamps between CPU user and CPU system. And then you're going to get one more data frame, which has um, the time that's slightly in an offset. So just going to let everybody kind of look at that, make sure um, that makes sense. So just once again, um, disk used, the percentage of disk used is uh, one second after the other two. Therefore, it's going to get its own data frame. Long time series data. If you really must read about it, it's right here. I'm just going to give you the URL. I'm not going to dive too much into it. It is really only used in the back end of Grafana. We don't expose it to the front end. So um, I, I don't see um, I, a reason to talk about it in, in too much detail or any detail, really. But if uh, we've documented it, and so if you're interested, um, that's the link. OK, so let's dive in, because I think this is where the, the, the real meat is. So I'm going to just stop uh, my share. And um, OK, so um, I'm using an old panel here. It's called the status, status dot panel. Um, it was written in Angular. It's not being maintained anymore. Um, and, and this is to show common problems that you're going to see. So I'm going to start with this one right here. Um, all series have the same timestamp. So, um, and it's really important to use this table view. This is a really great feature that we've added in um, Refine 8, I believe. So uh, this is what, I've got two series right here, and then uh, five columns. This, um, this is not, compatible with older panels. If you're using an older panel and you're not seeing your data on it, uh, that's because um, this format just simply is, isn't going to work with it anymore. So th those are kind of the telltale signs is when you sort of have, you know, you've taken a, uh, an aggregation, like an average or something, and you just have these values sort of lined up in separate series. So, um, I'm going to show you how uh, we have a transformation here. So prepare time series. And there's two options here, wide time series and multi-frame time series. Notice the long time series is not there. That's why I haven't talked about it too much. If I'm using a wide time series, hasn't really changed anything a lot because the timestamps uh, were all common amongst all of the data points. So it looks the same and it looks like nothing. So uh, using this particular transformation is not gonna help you. This is where multi-frame time series comes in. So if we just take a look at the table view, notice that now we have five. So this is actually five different data frames. Remember when uh, we were talking about uh, multi-frame time series that each data frame had one series in it. So these are the five series that are coming back. One's uh, got the column series A, next one has a series B, next one is series C. This is the format you're gonna want to have it's gonna it's what you're what you you need to look for um, and uh, this is because I went to my transformation and used multi-frame time series and when I do that I get my nice status dots so my visualization starts to work again um, this is going to work for any old panel that you have you just have to know how to sort of look at your your data make sure uh, Data sources like Splunk, for example, uh, they give you a lot of, in, in SQL data sources where you have a lot of flexibility as how to query your data, the, the, you're, you might be running into these problems a little bit more often. Um, series with different timestamps are no different. I'm just gonna show you the default real quick. Uh, so in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five with, on different timestamps. This is just fine so long as you use the multi-frame time series. It's going to put everything together. 
into different series. Just notice that we have some, some different nulls. And, um, and at the end of the day, though, uh, your panel is working again. And uh, this is a, a data source that I, I wrote because it was just, uh, I needed a, a good way to, to simulate a lot of data. So essentially, I'm making some random numbers here. This is the same sort of, de um, same sort of deal. I'm using a multi-frame time series. Uh, it's almost always the one that you're going to want to look at. But uh, so essentially, what's, what's happening here is I've got three series um, in one request. And I've got one series in my second request. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a data frame with one series and a data frame with three series. If I was to take this transformation off, it's going to take that off, hit save, hit reload. It's not going to work. And, and this is because, um, just like all the other scenarios, I've got three series now with a whole bunch of data in it which is just fine, except that um, old panels aren't going to like this. Uh, new panels will. I can switch it to something else, and, um, and the time series panel seems to be just fine with it. But old panels don't like it. They just don't. So uh, in this case, then, this is where you want to take a look at your data, make sure you understand um, that this, this type of data format is really going you know, really to muck things up. So um, just go down to your prepare time series, hit multi-frame, everything switched over, and away you go. So hope this is helpful for you. Um, that kind of ends my, my particular part of the presentation. Happy to answer any questions uh, on it. Um, if there's more specific use cases, uh, by, by all means, um, try to stump me, and uh, I, and. Um, I'll, I'll buy lunch if, uh, if, if you can. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident tonight. And that is, uh, that is it. So.